Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John. And welcome to our online audience. On this St. Patrick's Day, this afternoon we have our leadership board meeting at 1215. And then on Wednesday, we have a meeting for our youth and children at 5.30 before dinner so we can discuss our summer plans. Remember, Wednesday night dinners continue. Um, this week is on Wednesday. And then Wednesday night dinner the following week, which is Holy Week, is on Thursday. So we'll have a Thursday night dinner. And then we'll have a break for Masters. We are returning to the Green Jackets this spring for a May 24th game. So more information will come, but I always let the church office know. We kind of buy like a whole bunch of tickets. So let us know if you would like to attend. And our next food distribution is at the end of April, on April 20th. Yesterday there was a very successful food distribution. Lots of people were fed and we always are looking for volunteers to help with DCCM. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. Yesterday was a great party in front of the church as the St. Patrick's Day parade made its way down Green Street for many hours. <laughs> and thank you for those who donated bottles of water. We were able to give out all the water before the parade began. So now let us worship the Lord with gladness on this Lenten Sunday.
Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and all your kindness. Let us pray together. God of suffering and glory, in Jesus Christ you reveal the way of life through the path of obedience. Inscribe your law in our hearts, that in life we may not stray from you, but may be your people. Together, let us pray our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our Psalter this morning is found on page 785. Mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your mercy, Lord, our Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment.
put a new and right spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in a willing spirit. We invite our children to come forward for our children's time together. We're going to 
to be a small crowd today, the two of you, I think. We'll pretend that there's tons of children out there. Oh, oh, here comes a whole bunch more. Good to see y'all this morning. Can y'all see what Mr. Jeff has brought here? Let me show it to you. You know what this is? What this kind of art is called? It's the cross and it's a piece of art called mosaic. And does it look clean or does it look dirty? It's got dirt on it, doesn't it? Do you know where it's been? It's been out in my yard because it marks the place of my favorite dog, Charlie. We oftentimes have to face death right? My dog Charlie died when he was 15 years old. Have y'all ever lost a pet? It hurts, doesn't it, when you lose a pet? And sometimes the only way to get over the loss of a pet is to get a new one, right? This morning, we go in the season of Lent. We look a lot at stories that tell us about the death of Jesus. And death is very hard. It makes us sad when we lose a pet. So I marked my Charlie's grave with this mosaic. And I brought it this morning, but I brought something else. Can you hand me that box? In this box, I have a bunch of, what are these? These are flower seeds. This is my seed box because I gather last year's dead flowers and in the flowers there are seeds. And those seeds represent the potential of something new and great change. Today in our scriptures that we're just about to hear, Jesus reminds us that death does not have to be the final word. That death is like a seed that falls in the ground and brings great change. Okay, he says, unless a seed is put in the ground and dies and springs forth with new life, that is a good reminder for us this morning. So as Christian boys and girls, death makes us sad. And when we hear the stories about Jesus dying, we will be sad. But remember that death is only a change and that there is new life. Our preacher reminded us last week that always when John tells the story, he tells us both about death and resurrection. And so this morning, we will are a little bit sad because we hear Jesus talking about the fact that he's going to die, but he also talks about death like it was a seed to make new wheat. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer and pray after me. Dear God, we sometimes face death. And it makes us sad. But always, God, we remember that there is change and new possibilities with Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for coming down here. stand for a reading from the gospel today from the gospel of John now among those who went up to worship at a festival were some Greeks they came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee and said to him sir we wish to see Jesus Philip went and told Andrew 
And Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. But Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. In our gospel text this morning, Jesus knows who he is, that he will return to God. He doesn't need the declaration of you are my son whom I am well pleased, who I love, that is found in the other gospels. For Jesus knows. There's a confidence of Jesus in the gospel of John. That he understands exactly the path in which he is to go And if it's the path in which God wants him to go, he will keep moving. Last summer, some of you heard my lament on the fact that we cannot grow any tomatoes. Instead, we were growing weeds. Vines had formed no fruit. But we didn't touch it. We actually didn't even water it. At some point, we kind of just gave up, but we didn't dig up any plants. And then somewhere in early fall, tomatoes started to appear. All of October, we had tomatoes. We would pick them before they were even close to red because we didn't know what else in the yard was going to eat them. The mystery of who's eating your vegetables, who's taking your fruit. But we would pick them as they were green, and then we would let them turn red on the counter. And then they actually tasted pretty good. Now, they were not the same flavor as a July tomato. But they were pretty good for an October tomato. Especially one you weren't expecting at all. It was a great surprise. Will it happen again this year? I don't know if I want to find out. Maybe we'll plant something else. But it was good. And we just had to wait and see what the plant would produce. Jesus has gathered disciples. Jesus has encounters with John where people want to know. Is that the Messiah right there? Can I go and see what he is up to? As the Gospel of John grows, more and more people want to come and see exactly what is going on. For Jesus is saying things and doing things that is gathering great attention. The world 
is always peeking in to see exactly what is going on with Jesus. You know, the mystery of seeds, to me, I am not a botanist. If you understand this, it may not be a mystery to you. But I'm always amazed at how the seed just knows what to do. I prepare the dirt, or my husband Nick prepares the dirt. I just pick out what we're going to have. I pick out the seed. He prepares the dirt. We get all the beds ready. We used to grow a pretty good garden in a community garden. And then life happens. The seed knows what to do. The body of Christ works in that too mysterious way when we remember who we are working for, why we are doing the work of God in love. When things align just right, when life comes our way, we know what to do. And what we are to do is to be people who continually give the invitation to come and see. Come and see how Christ is at work, how the living Christ is offering grace and forgiveness and peace and joy and hope. Come and see how the mystery of faith is at work. The disciples have to learn from Jesus that they are in the invitation business of coming to see exactly what Christ is doing. And that that is for all the world to hear and all the world to do is to take that action incredibly serious. When I was a youth, you know, as many of you know, my youth minister now, he has grown up, like all of his youth have grown up. But the first thing he ever taught us was he took the picture of Jesus where he looks like he has the surfer hair. We have one on the third floor of our building, and someone said, oh, that picture of Jesus. I said, it is not a church if you don't have that picture of Jesus. He has to stay. And he has the long hair, and it's kind of a brown. And he took the picture off the wall, and he said, in youth group, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about Jesus. We're going to come and see. And that was his first lesson. And you know what? I don't remember that first lesson, but the adult volunteers who heard the first lesson, they remember the first lesson. And that's what we do. We don't leave Jesus hanging up on the wall on the third floor. Well, I did allow Jesus to stay on the third floor. But we give the invitation over and over and over again without limit on who is invited to come and see. And just maybe when we do it enough, the mystery of learning how to do that works will unfold and we will be like a seed and we will know what to do. So often in the church, we get kind of embarrassed about that making that invitation. I've thought about inviting someone that's not connected to St. John to come down and with the DCCM food market, right? And I keep overthinking the invitation. Why? I'm the pastor. I should be good at that. But I keep kind of thinking about it. Well, do I invite him to this month? Will it be too hot that day? Is the sun too bright in the parking lot? Do I tell him to wear sunscreen? And that's the easiest invitation to make. Come and see where God is at work. All 
also we get kind of embarrassed in the church because we wonder, well, is God really doing anything here? If we invite somebody to come and see, what are they actually going to see? That's how we feel about our homes, right? There's toys everywhere from the front door to the back door. I'm not going to make an invitation to come and see the toys. Don't worry. The body of Christ is not that fragile. It is for eternity. There will be something to see. And what there is to see is love at work between all of you. Some of you are new to this part of the body of Christ. Some of you go back your entire life to this part of the body of Christ. And that's where the come and see what is going on with the love of Christ here in this place is so fun and unpredictable. But if we are going to be like the seed that produces new fruit, we trust in the Holy Spirit's ability that when we make the invitation to come and see what God is doing, that they come and they see love, hope, peace, patience, kindness, and joy. Because the Holy Spirit knows what to do. For four years, I served a church where worship was big, and it was a circus. The senior pastor that I preached with would just jump up and start preaching at random times, and we would pull him back and say, read your bulletin. <laughs> the choir would not sing the anthem on the paper. The organist, we hired an organist that didn't know how to play the organ. Why? I don't know, but it worked out. Magically, we just sang the hymnal from front to back. She learned as we went. And yet, Somehow the Holy Spirit created in that place, in all of its silliness, I only made it four years there because of this. People were willing to come and see and experience the loving and living Christ. That is the same here. For this is a beautiful place within the body of Christ where we meet each week in many different ways. Some of us are good at Wednesday night dinner. Some of us are good in the Sunday school hour. Some of us are excellent at serving in our mobile pantry. Some of us are really good with the kids here. The body of Christ, when it is alive, knows exactly what to do. So that is the challenge before us. Are we people who continually give the invitation of come and see? And can we do it in a way where it just becomes natural. We don't overthink it. We allow for the Holy Spirit to smooth out the invitation <clears throat> because we have the living Christ to offer the world, and the world wants to know. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life. Together we will pray. When we offer God our confession, we join the beautiful work of reconciliation, which begins with the reconciling with God. Trusting in our partner in grace, let us make our confession first in silent prayer. Together, let us pray. I bond into myself the power of, of God to hold and to lead, his eye to watch, his might to stay, his ear to hearken to my need, the wisdom of God to teach, his hand to guide, his shield to ward, the word of God to give me speech, heavenly host to be my guard. Christ be with me. Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort me and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in the hearts of all that love me, Christ in the mouth of friend and stranger. I bind unto myself the name the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one, the one in three, of whom all nature hath creation. Eternal Father, Spirit Word, praise the followers of salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Amen. And now as the children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. At this time, I invite for you to stand and offer signs of peace to your neighbors. I invite our ushers to come forward with our morning's offering. May our gifts today go to the work of God's good kingdom.
Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and you are invited, if you would like to participate in the waving of palm branches, the procession of the palms to meet in the courtyard. Worship will begin outside, but you will be able to hear it inside. So, but all are invited who would like to help to begin our Palm Sunday celebration to meet outside next week. As we close worship today, we close with our ending hymn, Take Up Thy Cross, found on page 415. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.